uh, let's sort of, I've got h squared over c squared in each of these terms. So this would be m e v squared is equal to h squared over c squared times f i squared plus f final squared minus 2 f initial f final cosine of theta. And if theta is 0 degrees, then I can factor that, but it's not. Now, we're going to make an assumption here that the change in frequency of the light is going to change a little bit. That it will change, just I'm going to put in an uh, intermediate step, and I'm just going to say my final frequency is just my initial frequency plus some change in frequency. Well, that's always going to be true. The fact that that change in frequency is small, uh, as far as we're concerned, is going to pop up in a minute. So we'll make that substitution. Uh, let's see. So we have m e squared b squared equals f h squared over c squared times f initial squared plus f final squared minus 2 f initial f final cosine. That's what I had written on the other side. And now we're going to plug that in or into this. So I have m e squared b squared equals h squared over c squared times f i squared plus, here we go, f i plus delta f squared minus 2 f i, f i plus delta f cosine of theta. Ooh. See, the trouble is sometimes you just get so excited and just exhaust you. That's why occasionally you see a yawn or sleeping. So it's a lot of Fs. It is a lot of Fs. But at this point, if we just accept F as in it, F is my initial frequency here, so my F equal F initial, I don't have to write the subscripts anymore. Uh, let's go ahead and expand some stuff here. So this is h squared over c squared times f squared plus square in a binomial. Come on. F, f, uh, f squared plus, plus f delta f. f. Delta f squared is my square root. Yeah. You were close to the two, 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 yeah. f delta. two f delta f plus delta f squared minus, and then I'll distribute, so I have 2 f squared cosine theta plus 2 f delta f cosine theta. What were you saying about the get rid of the subscript to the end? Uh, at this point, since I don't have any final frequencies in my equation, uh -huh. I, oh, okay. if we just assume that the f at this point stands for the initial frequency, then I can, I can get away with slightly less rate, which is always a big plus. Okay. This is where we assume that the change in frequency is not significant. That, uh, well, the change in frequency is such that it is noticeable, but that change is a small number. So if I take that small number and square it, that term is practically zero. That's where we're going with that one. So I'm coming up with a reason to get rid of that. It's close enough to zero that we can get rid of it? Yes. Okay. Uh, formally, you would factor out f. Actually, I'm going to do an intermediate step. In essence, we're going to get rid of it, but I'm going to factor f out. So this is equal to h squared over c squared f squared. Uh, no, just f. And I'm left with f, two of them, 
plus 2 delta f plus delta f over f times delta f minus 2 f cosine theta plus 2 delta f cosine theta. In essence, by doing this, it becomes a little bit clearer. As long as the change in frequency is small compared to the frequency itself, this term is zero, or close enough to zero, so it goes away. Let's do a little factoring. Factoring. Questions up to here? Second continues about where this is headed. Dot dot dot, we have a law. Okay. Alright, so I've got h squared over c squared we'll go back here. Let's see, let's say dot. Just one to the n. F squared plus Oh, okay. I can do one other thing here before I go. <laughs> All these terms have a 2 in it. I can't cancel it out because I don't have 2 on the other side, but if I divide everything by 2, what I end up with is 1 half MEV squared equals. Sometimes I'm just tired of that. Isn't that M squared too? Yes, it should be. In my head, I squared it. Uh, fi, and then I have fi plus delta f minus f. Oh, I'm dropping my eyes. here, I've got fi plus delta f in common. Over here, I've got fi plus delta f. Put in the intermediate step, and h squared over c squared f times f plus delta f minus f plus delta f cosine of theta. And so this is h squared over c squared f times f plus delta f times 1 minus cosine theta. And you ask for the simplified form, and there you are. We're not done yet, I'm glad to say, because I know how much you would dis be disappointed if we got away from this too fast. If I divide both sides by the mass of the electron, get one half mass of the electron v squared that formula better look familiar to almost every single one in here equals h squared f over mass of the electron c squared times f plus delta f one minus cosine theta I know I'm going to be delighted when I get people enthusiastically answering, what is one half MEV squared? Kinetic form of kinetic energy. Of? I think the kinetic energy is what I was hoping for. Let's take it a little bit further. Of light. So the mass of the electron there. One of the electron. After. After I get the, it's the other particle. 
after it gets hit by the photon and the object is shooting off. The V is the final speed, is the after speed for the electron. Okay. All right, so we have this equation right here, all based upon conservation of momentum. We have a kinetic energy over on the left-hand side. So let's take a look at conservation of kinetic energy. I know, since it's a perfectly elastic collision, that my initial energy equals my final energy. So this would be the, the energy of my photon initially. It's going to be the energy of my photon final, plus the energy of my electron final. I know that energy of a photon is H times F initial. And final would be H times F final plus, well, it's all kinetic energy. We're not dealing with potential energy in this problem here. Yes, if you want to get really into the weeds of it, you could throw it in there, but we assume the electron's got to be ejected far enough. I'm not worried about it. Or the kinetic, it's enough to rip it away. The kinetic energy is vastly larger than the, any potential energy it would have. I know that my final, this is H times F plus delta F plus one half mp squared. And this is H F initial pipe. That's an initial there. HF initials will cancel out. What I'm left with is one half mass of the electron times the speed of the electron afterwards squared is equal to negative H. F, uh, H delta F. Since I know this is a positive number, delta F here has to be a negative number. In other words, it's going to lose frequency, which makes sense. Plugging this into the equation we had just had, I have negative H delta F equals h squared over m e c squared f times f plus delta f, 1 minus cosine of theta. And all of the, those two h's are still points constant? Yes, absolutely. I am going to factor f out of this expression right here. Uh, actually, I can get rid of one of the H's also. So let's see if, what kind of stunning effects I can have. Ooh. There we go. Eventually get the right number. <coughs> so negative delta F equals H F squared over M E C squared times one plus delta F over F times one minus cosine theta. Years from now, you'll be telling your grandkids. Yeah, I remember the exact time when I solved that equation. But when are we ever going to have to use it? Because you're on a game show. Pretty intense game show. <laughs> By then, all the game shows will be for the intellectuals. Unlike now. Love Island is of course anything other than my daughter and other people, but English majors. It's always an embarrassment when she talks about something happening on Love Island. Love Island UK. Delta 
equals h over mass of the electrons, c squared, f squared, one plus delta f over f, one minus cosine theta, this should be what I just had to do from the other side of the page. Uh, getting the frequencies all on one side, I get negative delta f, over f squared, one plus delta f over f. So just dividing both sides by this, I'm left with h over m dc squared, one minus cosine theta. So the f is the frequency, and it's going to the frequency. H is the weight constant, m is the mass of the electron, and c is the speed of light. Yes. I'm sort of going to reverse this step, and I'm looking at my notes thinking, why on earth did I do it the first time? But uh, I'm going to distribute one of the f's through this, so I get negative delta f. f times f plus delta f is equal to all that. I got a fraction here with a very clearly, uh, clearly factored denominator. I can break this into the sum of fractions. So I have negative delta F over F times F plus delta F. How do you break that into the sum of something over f plus something over f plus delta f? Time to bring in those math skills again. Um, I forgot what the square at the bottom. Right? Pardon? It's not square at the bottom. No. I say no, I'm thinking uh, not the way I'm thinking about it. So for right now, I'm just going to put A, B here. I, I need to figure out what A and B are. I multiply everything by the common denominator, and so I get negative delta F equals A times F plus delta F plus B times F. So I have negative delta F is equal to AF plus A delta F plus BF. So that's equal to A plus B times F plus A delta F. I know that if this is if this equation works for any frequency and change of frequency, the only way it works is that if A is negative one, if A is negative one because I have delta F here and delta F here, the coefficients have to be the same. And a plus b must be equal to zero. So if a is negative one, b would have to be one. And so this becomes, let's see, a is negative one, b is one. So I have one over f plus delta f minus one over f. And that's going to be equal to h over mass of the electron, speed of the light squared, times one minus cosine theta. At this point, if I multiply both sides, multiply everything by the speed of light, I get C over F plus delta F minus C over F is equal to H over mass of the electron, speed of light, not squared, that's, that's a C squared right there. One minus cosine of theta. What is speed of light divided by the frequency?
or speed in general? The speed of a wave divided by the frequency? Wavelength. Yep. This would be my final wavelength. This is my initial wavelength. And so what I'm left with at the very end is the change in the wavelength of the light is equal to H over mass of the electron times C times one minus cosine of theta. We conveniently do not have the speed of the electron anymore built into my final equation here. So all I have to do is look at the radiation coming out. So I set this up. I know I have light of a particular frequency aimed at my, my material. I then look, I just basically move my detector around at different angles to see basically what I get. And so that is the equation right there that basically is describing Compton's scattering. And there's yet one more piece of evidence that light is behaving like a particle. Because I use conservation of momentum, treating it like a particle with a you know, sort of a different kind of momentum. There's another problem, classical mechanics. Actually, there's several more. What happens when you have an electric field that changes? Electric flux. Okay. Which changes? What happens if you have an electric flux that changes? EMF. Say it again? EMF. Okay. Uh, I get an EMF if I've got a change in the magnetic flux. 